right, so here's another example of uh, solving a differential equation. So again, get you know, familiar with this, uh, this language here. Find the particular solution y equals f of x to the differential equation dy over dx equals 4x over w with initial condition f of 1 equals negative 4. You know, there's times where they might switch it up and say something instead of dy over dx, it could be like, you know, dA over dt, where A is some function that represents, I don't know, you know, something that's with time changing. But you know, regardless of the variables, this, the process is going to be the same. So we want to, basically we're looking to find the original function. So the first step, I'm going to start with our differential equation. And this is an absolutely vital step, is separating the variables. Which means, again, get the y's with the dy's, get the x's with the dx's. This one's fairly straightforward, just cross multiply essentially here. And when you do that, you'll get y dy is equal to 4x dx. So I have the y's with the dy's, I got the x's with the dx's, I'm ready to go. Okay? So this would, you know, on an AP test, if it was a free response, this would be one point for getting that. Now I need to take my antiderivative. So the antiderivative on the, le the left side here is just y squared over 2 is equal to 4x squared over 2 plus c. Okay, so you get a point for, put, for finding your antiderivatives and you get a point for plus c. You need to make sure you put your plus c on that step when you take the antiderivatives. Okay, so um, in the prior example it was one where you know the antiderivative we used was a natural log and so we had to raise both sides to e and I said you know go through and solve it first on that one. Solve for y first. So in this case, when you don't have a natural log thing, it's not going to matter. You can solve for y first if you want to, or you could just plug in your initial condition right away. So I'll go ahead and do that in this case. So I'm going to plug in my initial condition of 1, negative 4 to figure out what c is. So I'm going to plug 1 in for x and negative 4 in for y. So when I plug in negative 4 for y, it's going to be negative 4 squared over 2 equals and let's see here, it's going to be, you know, 4 over 2 is just 2. So I'm just going to write that as 2 times x squared. 2 times, and then x is just 1 squared plus c. So I go ahead and square negative 4. That becomes 16 over 2 is equal to 2 times 1 squared is just 2 plus c. So this is going to be 8 equals 2 plus c. So therefore, c is just equal to 6. I'm going to take 6, and I'm going to plug that back in for c into this equation right here and get y squared over 2 is equal to, um, instead of writing it as 4 over 2x squared, I'll write it as 2x squared and then plus 6. Just want to point something out. Let's say you and a friend were working a problem out, and your friend maybe got to this step and multiplied by 2 first, okay? And, you know, changed maybe C. Instead of writing C as 2C, just rewrote it as C because 2C would just still be a constant. You could come up with a different value of C, but when you plug it back in, you would notice that, oh, okay, you know, after I simplify things, it's, it's the same value. So depending on how you manipulate and where you plug in your initial condition, you might get a different value for C, but that doesn't mean that you've done things wrong, necessarily, obviously. Okay, now I need to make sure and find that particular solution, y equals f of x, so it means I've got to get y by itself. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 first here. y squared equals 4x squared plus 12. I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides to get y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4x squared plus 12. Now, i got to think for a second here. You know, I notice I put the plus or minus, because when you're solving an equation, you always, when you take the square root, you always put plus or minus there, because both of them could be the, the answer to the, the solution there, or the answer to the equation. But, going back to my initial condition, 1, negative 4, I've got to make sure that that initial condition works with my final answer. So, if I plug 1 in for x, okay, so when I do that, right, I get, um, you know, square root of 4 times 1 squared plus 12. So, 4, it's going to be 4 plus 12, right? So, it ends up being square root of 16, which is just 4. Square root of 16 is 4. So, in order for y to be equal to negative 4, I actually need to use the negative right here of that, okay? So, it's a little tricky but when you have an option like that between a plus or minus, and you don't always have it depending on what your problem is, you have to make sure that your initial condition works in your final answer. And that's actually always a good thing to check, is once you get your final answer, always just check. Plug your initial condition in, plug 1 in for x, plug negative 4 in for y. Does it end up equaling each other like it should? That's always a good uh, way to check if you've done things correctly.